So what are the differences between cheap and expensive standing desks? Over the past 17 years, I've personally watched the standing desk category grow from a little unknown world of weird movable desks to one that's now close to mainstream, full of commoditized products being offered for as little as $100 on Amazon. But if both products do the movement thing, do you really need to spend over $1,000 for an expensive one? There's definitely a lack of substance to some of the cheaper standing desks compared to the more expensive ones. Now, the cheap and lightweight materials make many of these cheaper standing desks from brands like Facebo feel like you could just simply blow them over. And while this isn't necessarily true, the Facebo is so light that people in our studio will literally pick this thing up and carry it around. Now, when you look at the connection points, the thickness of metal, and the surfaces used, you can see why stability is an issue here at this price point. Now, I personally wouldn't trust my 49-inch ultra-wide screen on something like this. Now, if we compare that to really any of the mid to upper range expensive standing desks, the frames feel much more substantial. The thickness of the steel columns, the weight of their feet, and the surfaces will immediately give you a better feeling about putting something of value on top of the desk. While not all of the standing desks at this price point are necessarily solid, none of them feel like they'll blow away with a gust of wind. Surface quality is definitely another big difference between these two types of standing desks, with the cheap standing desk brands trying to really hide their quality of their products in premium looking pictures, taken at just the right angle. But the quality of their surfaces is really hard to hide from. And this is especially true when you look at products with the two-piece tops, designed solely to just keep down shipping costs and be as cheap as possible. These two-piece tops are thin and held together with cheap brackets. They also play a part in the poor stability since they tend to flex a lot easier than the thicker single piece top. I've yet to find an expensive standing desk that doesn't include a single piece top. They are always one inch thick or greater as well, which makes a big difference in their appearance and feel. You'll find a wide variety of surface options in the expensive range as well, from commercial grade laminate to premium hardwoods and even high quality bamboo. Stability issues just come standard with cheap standing desks. In fact, I have yet to find a single cheap standing desk that I would consider to be stable. It honestly just comes with the territory when you look at how these desks are manufactured. Poorly married columns with fit issues that can be seen as the desk moves around, tons of parts being held together with cheap hardware just create too many areas that easily move around. And lightweight materials that are too flexible, they just really don't stand a chance to be stable. Now, expensive alternatives are interesting. Not all of them are stable, but they are more stable than their cheap counterparts. When looking at expensive standing desks, you can expect a couple things. First, the low to mid ranges for most of them should be very stable. Beyond that, if the frame doesn't include wedges or a stability bar, lateral stability won't be great, especially as it gets into its highest points. Front to back stability will depend on two things. How well the columns are fit together, avoiding any play is super important here. And secondly, how much overlap is in the column. As a desk extends upward, the columns expand from one another and lose the natural stability they have when they're fully overlapped and play is minimized. While both desks might go up and down, how they do it and what extra tech they come with will be significantly different. The first cheap standing desk that hit the market only included the most basic up and down switches. And if you held the button, you'd hear the motors still trying to move up even beyond their max height or minimum height. More recent brands like Facebo and SHW do now include programmable button options with their cheap standing desks. These allow you to see a digital readout and use what's called one-touch height adjustment. But some of the cheap standing desks that include this feature won't include collision avoidance systems that prevent the desk from crushing things. The ones that do are pretty basic and not sensitive enough, in my opinion, to be really safe. Now, when we compare that to the expensive standing desk, there's quite a few additional options with their electronics packages, including more sensitive collision avoidance systems to start. Second to that, many of these more expensive brands now include Bluetooth connectivity to make adjustments to the desk height, set custom min and max height ranges, and even reminders for when to stand if you need that little nudge to get up. Our own line of standing desks, the Vert Desk V3 and New Heights, use Bluetooth connectivity for voice control features that actually will move the desk up and down. The gears inside the columns of a standing desk are important to the longevity of the product. Smooth operating gears lift efficiently and will not put additional wear and tear on a standing desk's motors. But even the biggest novice can spot the quality difference between the cheap and expensive standing desk gears. Many of the cheapest standing desks I've tested include the most crude looking gears inside their columns. But when you have to cut costs, this is definitely the easiest way to do it. Because these are hidden inside the columns and no one's the wiser of what they really look like. Cheap gears, though, are susceptible to breaking if a desk is overloaded by weight or running into an immovable object. Cheap plastics, excessive lubrication, and inefficiencies are the most common within these systems. 
More expensive gear systems from companies like Linac and Ketterer are definitely the cream of the crop. Now, these systems have been refined over decades with the best of the best in engineering minds in the space, focusing on maximizing efficiency and the life of the product. It's no real surprise, though, that Chinese companies are constantly trying to copy these products. But fortunately for Linac and Ketterer, they've been unable to replicate the level of quality that's currently being produced by these global leaders. Now, premium brands that utilize these gears should expect to see their frames function well beyond their warranty periods. Motor quality differences are fairly obvious because of the different speeds and weight capacities you'll find from the least expensive to the most expensive standing desks. The cheap standing desks that I've reviewed all include single motor systems, but just having a single motor doesn't necessarily mean it's low quality. The VertDesk V3 and Steelcase Solo are a couple mid-range standing desks that have single motors and have no issues lifting larger capacities with ease. But cheap standing desk motors tend to have less power and work harder to perform the same tasks as their more expensive counterparts. The more premium standing desk options in the field utilize top-of-the-line motors with significant advantage over their efficiency than cheap counterparts. Motors with gear systems engineered for use within a standing desk will not require additional braking systems that are used to prevent back driving of tables, but instead feature the correct gear ratios to create the proper braking naturally. In essence, this should allow those motors to run without systems put in place that needlessly add more friction to their system, shortening life cycles of the product, again helping these tables live well beyond their warranty periods. The adjustment speed of a standing desk can be super annoying if it's extremely slow. Typically, we find that cheaper desks tend to be slower than their more expensive counterparts. Now, I've personally done a ton of different load testing of popular brands to illustrate this, and you can actually see with the Fazebo product, the desk starts painfully slow with minimal stuff on its surface. But as you begin to add more weight to the surface, the speed drops even more. Now, while this might not feel like it would be impactful, we live fast-paced lives and expect things to happen quickly. Sitting there and waiting for your desk to catch up can definitely be a problem for those of us who don't have patience. Now, when you compare that to more expensive standing desks and even ones within the mid-range, you'll find much better consistency here with their adjustment speed. Typically, we see desks here moving 25 to 50% faster than cheap standing desks. When you load the desk up with additional weight, many of the desks will run very close to their original speeds as well. Lifting capacities are very similar to adjustment speeds with the cheaper brands tending to offer quite a bit less capacity. Now, between the five different popular brands that I've tested, the average capacity is about a half or less here than the mid to upper range desks. Desks like Monoprice only have a load capacity of 110 pounds, and the Fazebo includes two separate capacity ratings, one for a static load and the other for dynamic, and I've never actually seen this before on a premium product. Now, some might say it's obvious that expensive desks can lift more than these cheaper alternatives as most of them have two motors versus the single motor systems found on almost all desks under $300. But look at the desks like VertDesk V3 and Steelcase Solo again. Both feature single motor systems that can lift at least 275 pounds with ease. The VertDesk V3 has no issues lifting over 300 pounds when overload capacity settings are turned off, and the Solo is actually rated at 350 pounds. Premium products can just lift more, which is likely good for the longevity of the product, especially if you plan to load it up with a lot of stuff, or maybe you want to have a heavy hardwood surface. All standing desks require a combination of lubrication and glide systems to efficiently adjust through their height range. Now, the cheap standing desks are more noticeably greasy on their columns. Now, I'm not 100% sure if this is done because it's a requirement for maintaining the function of the desk over a lot of cycles up and down, or if maybe it's just a byproduct of the lack of quality control here. Either way, it can be pretty gross, and depending on the frame, white frames like the SHW can almost be hideous. Now, more expensive standing desks will definitely show signs of lubrication on the columns over time. This can be almost unavoidable, as some lubrication is required for most frames with those plastic glides sliding across the painted finish on their columns. Overall, though, we tend to see much better consistency from higher-end frame manufacturers than those cheap standing options. For some products like the New Heights XT, the use of anodized aluminum will allow you to easily wipe off any excessive lubrication from the columns. And this is because after only a few cycles, it's able to embed itself in the pores of the aluminum, helping to maintain the efficiency of the glides on the aluminum over its life cycle. How long a warranty of a product is doesn't always perfectly align with the cost of the item, but in the standing desk world, there is quite a bit of overlap here. The warranty a brand puts on their product is only as good as the company or brand that supports it, though. 
So with that said, even the cheapest standing desks come with some level of warranty. The reviews that I've seen though, just don't paint a great picture with actually getting some level of service on those warranties. Now overall, these cheap standing desks have a very short warranty period with some of them as short as only 30 days. The warranties that are found on the mid to high price standing desk can vary, but on average, the warranty periods are five to 10 times longer than cheap standing desks. We see a lot of the mid-range products now offering warranty periods that are 10 plus years, and products like Herman Miller Renew and New Heights S series coming with warranties that will even provide on-site repairs done by professional technicians. Hopefully this video helped you understand better what the differences are between the cheap and expensive standing desk. You should definitely check out my last video though where I picked the best standing desk at every price point from $300 to $7,000. Thanks for watching.